Hi, this is Bob from Turbot. If you're looking for a quick demo of Turbot Guardrails features, you're in the right spot. In this demo, we're going to show how you can sync your Azure resources directly into your ServiceNow CMDB using Turbot Guardrails. So to get started, in your Turbot Guardrails workspace, if you have not already done so, you can associate your ServiceNow instance. So you'd bring a username and password, client ID, client secret, as well as an application scope that you're going to use for the integration. Now you can associate this in our UI through the API or through a Terraform configuration. In ServiceNow, for my demo, I've already created an application specific for this type of integration. I've already synced some AWS tables into this app. Uh, you can also sync in GCP. For the intention of this demo, we're going to focus on Azure and specifically Azure storage accounts. You can leverage your own existing application or create a new one. Back in Turbot, if I want to set some policies for uh, syncing Azure storage accounts, I head over to my Azure or to my uh, Turbot Guardrails policies, head to the my Azure policy sets, and I can go all the way down into my storage and specifically storage accounts. Now, the ServiceNow guardrail policies are right in line with the rest of your guardrail policies that you've enabled in your environment. So whether or not you're enforcing like access tier, encryption and transit settings, minimum TLS, tagging, uh, et cetera, uh, your ServiceNow policies are just part of that suite. And specifically, the policies that you're setting here for ServiceNow are what is the table definition for uh, that Turbot's guardrails is going to create into ServiceNow? as well as what are the CI records and what do they look like uh, for what values are going to be syncing in. So you can leverage the existing defaults and simply just enable and Turbot will start syncing right away. You can also open up those configurations and define your schemas as well as the, the CI definitions. So to get started, I'm just going to do the simple sync and then we're going to open up those schema definitions and edit them with, with custom values or more data that we can bring in from Azure. You want to then first create tables that are going to be synced from guardrails to ServiceNow. And that's simply just one policy. So for your storage account, you're just going to have Turbot come from the default skip to enforce configure. Here I'm going to update that. And now Turbot's going to be managing, uh, creating a table and then managing the columns moving forward in that table per your definition. So back in my ServiceNow application, if I refresh, we're now going to see that Azure storage account table alongside my Amazon ones. When I click into that table, I have some columns that I selected by default. Uh, so like the account name, uh, the storage account name, the resource group region, access tier, uh, the tags. Now there is no data populated yet. So right now we just enabled the table to be created. If we want to start now syncing the records in. So in this example, I have a subscription. Uh, and of course you can do multiple subscriptions and multiple different resource types. Uh, for here, we're just focusing on one sub and, and a few resources. So here I have four storage accounts uh, that I want to sync initially. So if I go back into my Turbo policies, I have a configuration item policy that I can set. It's defaulted to skip, uh, but I can start enforcing it to sync. Now, this is going to sync the initial resources from your Azure subscriptions that you've enabled um, to your ServiceNow CMDB for any creates, updates, or deletes. Now, um, for deletions, we have two options. One is that you can have guardrails. If it discovers that an Azure resource is deleted, it can also delete the record in ServiceNow CMDB. Uh, but you can also choose it not to. You could choose it to keep it historically in the CMDB but change an archival status. So if you wanted to change the, the definition where it stays into the ServiceNow table, but you just change a field that shows that it's been terminated or it's no longer active, uh, you can choose what that value is. And so Turbot can basically archive that record versus deleting it. And so for the demo, I'm just gonna pick the, the simple sync, which will delete resources from the CMDB um, if they're deleted in Azure. And so here I'm gonna update all right, now that sync is enabled, if I go back into my service now, I'll actually see those original four storage accounts synced into this table right away. So if I just hit the refresh button, great. 
now we see all four of these uh, storage accounts synced into the CMDB. That's great because it syncs everything that's existing in your environment. So then you have a baseline and moving forward, it's gonna be capturing any creates, updates and deletes uh, continuously. And so no further policies need to be set. Turbot's just working in the background to discover and capture and, and, and sync that information. So to show that it also works with creates and also with updates, I'll, I'll take some action within my subscription to show you how it works in real time. So if I go in and create a storage account here, so I'll create one in my dev resource group and do an Acme demo Turbot 5. All right, great. Now that deployment is happening in the background, I can go back into my, uh, my ServiceNow table and we'll give it a, a few seconds in Azure. Uh, writing records into Azure Monitor can take tens of seconds to minutes. Um, it's different based on different timing of the environment. But once that record is succeeded within Azure, Turbot Guardrails picks it up immediately and this guardrail will operate immediately to sync it into ServiceNow. So with that, we'll wait a few seconds and then hit a refresh. All right, great. So now we have uh, the Acme Demo Turbot 5 storage account now synced into ServiceNow. And so we can see some of the configuration items have come through. And now if we wanted to make an update to that bucket we, or to that storage account, we can then see that change within ServiceNow as well. And so let's go to the resource and let's change one of the configurations. So why don't we just pick on access tier and we'll change it from hot to, to cold. So here it was in hot, now we just moved it to cold and then we'll save. All right, so now this is an update uh, to the resource it says here it's going to take about 30 seconds to record. Uh, so we'll get that within a minute and sync it into. So back in the service now, let's do a refresh. And now we can see that that Acme Demo Turbot 5 storage account now has a cool status for its access tier. So whether you're creating new resources or updating existing ones, Guardrails is going to sync those updates in as well as your deletes. Now, if you have more additional use cases around your schema uh, versus maybe just a few of these uh, columns, you can add and adjust uh, as you see fit. So other policies within Turbot help you define the table definition. And so here, uh, that, that table that we created, that Azure storage, storage, storage account table is its own CMDBCI item you could choose any table name or existing table that you have. You can choose to extend off of an existing table as well. Uh, and you could pick the columns. So there's a number of information that we could have chose. I just had a few simple uh, columns to get started with. But let's say that we wanted to bring in uh, some additional information into, uh, into the CMDB. I could simply uh, take in some of the information like the minimal TLS version, which is data already within ServiceNow. Um, and I can create my own custom columns. So in this case, I'm creating a custom app ID column that I'm gonna populate. And so if I just update the table here, go back in the ServiceNow, we can then um, update our, our columns here, add the application ID and minimal TLS. And now we have those columns within uh, your service now. So now we need to update our configuration item details to populate this information. So going back into guardrails, if I wanted to add um, additional information, so the, the storage account, the access tier, that's all coming from uh, the information from Azure. Uh, if I wanted to then add additional information, so let's say the minimum TLS, I can add that information in, so that's data coming in, and that's very specific about minimum TLS. If I then wanted to add that application ID, this is a custom, uh, this is custom information that I'm gonna add in. And so this is actually part of the tags that are associated on that resource. I'm gonna elevate one of those key values into its own column in the CMDB. And 
so here I'll update, update again, and let me go back into ServiceNow. We're now going to see once I refresh that these columns are going to be populated with more data. That information now is already in. So now I've taken this, this key value pair that was in across these tags and I've elevated it into its own column. In this example, I just pulled in additional information in Azure about the minimum TLS um, into another column. So there's infinite possibilities, uh, really straightforward to add and configure to meet your needs or just lean into the defaults uh, that we've already defined. Um, and so a lot of opportunities for, for you to extend to other resource types within Azure across all of your subscriptions and sync that into the ServiceNow uh, CMDB. If you have any additional questions, you can reach out to us at turbot.com start. Thank you.